We're going to pray first. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who's uh, joining us for our Divine Will Study Group. Uh, <clears throat> there's uh, much to talk about, much uh, to learn uh, in the volumes. We'll, we'll start with prayer. Uh, there's uh, so much going on in the world and especially in our nation at this time. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll touch on that a little bit after we open with prayer. Uh, tomorrow for us uh, and uh, the recordings, you can always pray the uh, Fatima prayers, but uh, for us, we uh, will have the um, first Saturday devotions, the Mass, uh, tomorrow. And so I uh, am uh, including one of the prayers that uh, um, those with the uh, devotion to Our Lady of Fatima and uh, pray the prayers regularly. It's certainly a time that um, applies to what's going on in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly, and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of, your, of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference with which he himself is offended. By the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. And as we study the writings uh, on the divine will, the book of heaven, we ask Louisa to pray for us. Louisa, little daughter of the divine will, teach us to live in the divine will. Come divine will to reign on earth and through the intercession of Louisa, send us, Lord, apostles to the kingdom of the divine will and make us, Lord, apostles to the kingdom of the divine will. Amen. And uh, we always pray for the purification and sanctification of priests and all souls that's so desperately needed in the church and for the world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious body, wounds, and blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb without spot or blemish, in reparation for my sins and for the sins of all thy priests. Come, divine will, by thy precious body, wounds, and blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests and all souls. O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named, have mercy on all thy priests, and wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And we'll save the deliverance prayer for the end of the meeting. It's certainly needed in the world today, especially with all the um, unbelievable things that are being promoted in the world this month. You know, <clears throat> uh, there's uh, always good articles on National Catholic Register and um, uh, the uh, uh, Catholic News Agency. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the point that June is the month of the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart is uh, really the focus that we need to have. Uh, we just came out of the wonderful month of May, the Marian month of May, with Marian feasts, including closing May with uh, celebrating uh, Mary, Mother of the Church, and the Visitation. And she is constantly bringing Jesus to us. She is the, the God-bearer, Theotokos. There's never a time when we want her help that she's not bringing Jesus to us and wanting to pray, take all of our prayers our concerns, our self-sacrifice, especially uh, to Jesus with the fragrance of her embellishing our offerings in such a way that they are even more pleasing and more powerful. She gives us sips of the divine will, even as she gave sips of the divine will to her son as she nursed him. And so we can always appeal to her to help us along the way. Uh, we always pray a rosary at the beginning of our meeting before we start recording. And uh, the meditations that we're using in the month of June are the mysteries of light. Um, and uh, I think we've had some questions about why is it that the collection of mysteries of light that some people have uh, are a little bit different uh, or not, uh, not as short as the ones that we use for the rosary. It's just so that the rosary doesn't take a, a full hour. Some of the meditations of the mysteries of light in the prayer book are uh, quite long. Uh, two or three pages and so we abbreviate those a little bit so that we can keep the rosary within a reasonable time frame and, and start with the recording for the study of the divine will 
uh, close to the regular time that we begin. <clears throat> but uh, in, in the meditations, the first one, uh, the baptism at the River Jordan, uh, there were a few things in each of these mysteries that I just want to touch on since um, they are not included in, in the recorded portion. Uh, the baptism of Jesus gives to us, as long as this is a, a focus that Jesus is making clear to us, as long as we give ourselves completely and continuously to him. So he gives us everything if we are striving and we need his help, we need the light that he shines in our intellect uh, to know what he can do, what he wants to do next in us. And so if we're striving to give ourselves completely and continuously, all that he has to give us, he continues to pour out into our souls. And so uh, <clears throat> we want to reach the full benefit uh, of this baptizing that he does in the course of an entire life. Uh, certainly it begins at the sacramental baptism and divine life is given to us at that time. But as I've mentioned uh, in many homilies related to the sacrament of baptism, uh, the, the, the gift is there, but can be bound up. Uh, and so uh, he wants to baptize every action, every thought, every word, every heartbeat, every breath, every part of our being. And uh, he's uh, most able to do that if we're striving to give ourselves completely and continuously to him. Then in the... Um, uh, the second uh, mystery is I, I thought about this um, uh, do whatever he tells you, you know, the, the, the wedding feast at Cana. The Blessed Mother said, do whatever he tells you. And in the meditation, many, many times, do what he tells you, do what he tells you. And she's saying it out of love. Uh, it's an urging so that we can receive all the, the miraculous unfolding of his will in our lives that he has created us to not only enjoy in heaven, but to be a part of this very important time on earth. And so she says, do whatever he tells you, the proclamation of the kingdom. And then in the, in the um, third mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom, it's interesting. Jesus then says, let me do. So first the Blessed Mother is saying, do whatever he tells you. And then in the next mystery, Jesus is saying, let me do. And what he's saying is, let me do in you. Let me be the life of all that you do. Let it be me who is doing it in you. This is a, uh, the way he can divinize our acts and give them a life that never ends and the, and the fruitfulness of those acts that he himself animates if we let him do all that we do. And then <clears throat> uh, I, I uh, went to the... Um, uh, the uh, transfiguration and the meditation on the transfiguration, uh, there's this focus of what he wants us to know, the knowing, uh, the gaining the knowledge that he's offering to us. And we can see so much uh, unbelievable confusion that's going on today and so much dabbling in the occult. Uh, interestingly, in this one week, I've had uh, uh, different people ask me about the evil eye and the uh, the um, jewelry and the necklaces and the bracelets and and the and the um, emblems on shirts and what have you uh, it is evil that's why it's called the evil eye it's not a nice decoration it, it's uh, it's satanic so if you have any of that garbage or if you have anything else related to the occult get it out of your house and don't give it to somebody else destroy it, it <clears throat> because it makes evil welcome you know in the sacred scriptures, uh, we hear, my people perish for lack of knowledge. In Hosea uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 6, he makes it very clear that in our ignorance, we can really render ourselves very vulnerable and we can wind up suffering many consequences. And then in that same passage, if you continue reading in Hosea 4, 6, then he gives a pretty strong warning about the consequences of those who knowingly, deliberately reject the knowledge that he's trying to impart. And so for us uh, to know more of what he's teaching us about the divine will and to try to put it into practice is the most secure and beautiful way to move ahead with the Lord. And uh, then uh, in the, uh, also we're, we're uh, asked by 
by the Lord, instructed by the Lord, really, to be open to the light. And the Blessed Mother tells us this, be open to the light. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the light of the world, and he wants to fill us with his light so that everywhere that, that we go, he and I, he and you, go together, uh, <clears throat> that light can radiate in every direction and help souls come to know, love, and serve the Lord. And then lastly, in this month, <clears throat> when there are so so there's so much media uh, facilitating uh, a confusion and a, and a uh, celebrating sinful ways of life. We need to look at the saints of our church. Uh, this month, well, tomorrow, uh, uh, St. Um, Luanga and his uh, companion martyrs has a very strong message about the chastity that, that pleases the Lord and the consequences of, of the world coming against um, the, the uh, sins against chastity. And so we need to uh, be praying constantly, uh, <clears throat> not judging, not angry, uh, but um, really interceding with a, with a moaning, a groaning for the sake of souls that, that don't have the knowledge and are going the ways of the world. Uh, <clears throat> so we've got uh, great saints that have made sacrifice. I think of Today, the feast was for uh, saints, uh, martyrs, Marcellinus and Peter. Uh, Marcellinus, a presbyter, Peter, an exorcist. And uh, uh, Diocletian uh, at first gave uh, freedom to the Catholics, but then he decided he wanted them worshiping him. And anybody that would not, he would burn their churches, and then he would torture and kill uh, those who were faithful to the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> burning churches kind of uh, like what's going on in our world today. And so we need to stand firm with love and intercede because uh, part of the testimony related to these two saints is that even when they were in jail, they were bringing to conversion jailers and others. There was a deliverance of those who were uh, demonically uh, impacted. So they never stopped doing what they were created to do. We cannot stop doing what God has created us to do. Our satisfaction and fulfillment uh, can only be accomplished here on earth and especially for eternity if we try to learn and live what we have in the volumes. And so with that, uh, Mark, we can begin. September 2nd, 1920. The martyrdom of love and of sorrow for Jesus because of the lack of company of the creature. I live in the midst of almost continuous privations. At the most, my sweet Jesus makes himself seen, and then he escapes me like a flash. Ah, uh, only Jesus knows the martyrdom of my poor heart. Now I was thinking about the love with which he suffered so much for us, and my always lovable Jesus told me, my daughter, my first martyrdom was love, and love delivered my second martyrdom, pain. Each pain was preceded by immense seas of love. But when love found itself alone and abandoned by the majority of creatures, I raved, I agonized. And since my love could not find anyone to whom to give itself, it concentrated within me, drowning me and giving me such pains that all other pains seemed to refresh me compared to these. Ah, uh, if only I had company in love, I would feel happy because with company, all things acquire happiness and they diffuse, they multiply. Love close to another love is happy, be it even the most tiny love, because it finds itself one to whom to give itself, one to whom to make itself known, one to whom to give life, through its own love. But if it is close to someone who does not love it, who despises it, who does not care about it, love is very unhappy because it does not find the way to communicate itself and to give him life. Beauty close to ugliness feels dishonored, and it seems that they shun each other because beauty hates ugliness, while ugliness close to beauty feels more ugly. What is beautiful is happy to be close to something beautiful 
and they communicate beauty to each other. The same for all other things. What is the use for a teacher of being learned and having studied so much if he cannot find a pupil to whom to teach? Oh, how unhappy he is, not finding anyone to whom to teach so much doctrine. What is the use of a doctor having understood the art of medicine if no sick person calls him to make display of his ability? What is the use for a rich person of being rich if nobody approaches him and remaining alone in spite of his riches, not finding the way to make them known and to communicate them to someone, he may die of starvation. Only company is that which makes everyone happy, allowing good to be carried out and making it grow. Isolation makes one unhappy and renders everything sterile. Ah, my daughter, oh, how my love suffers this isolation and those few who keep me company from my refreshment and my happiness. <clears throat> the Lord's explaining this to us because he wants us to keep him company and form uh, his refreshment and his happiness. I don't think there's any of us that would not want to hear the Lord say on the day that we cross the threshold called death into eternity, to be greeted by him and say and hear him say, you formed on earth my refreshment and my happiness. And there have been great saints throughout the history of the church that have striven to be just that for him. But we have the great privilege in this period of human history to be able to be a, a refreshment, a source of divine refreshment and divine happiness with the di divine will animating uh, our keeping him company. Uh, we had um, in the meditations of the rosary before we began the recording, a quotation of Jesus making it clear that not until this book of heaven and the lessons on how to live in the divine will were the saints of old uh, able or aware of this great privilege that's being offered to us. They had their very important contribution uh, for uh, the history of the church and, and uh, the lights uh, that the Lord gave them to uh, share for us and establish foundations upon which we are to uh, excel, but we're given the lessons on the divine will, which takes it completely to a whole new level because of the divine life that is the animator. And so this refreshment and happiness, will we will see it. The acts, the prayers, the accompanying our Lord in Eucharistic adoration, the stopping to make visits at churches when uh, we don't have much time, but we happen to be in the area of a Catholic church. And, and uh, we know that uh, uh, a lot of time he's there all by himself. You step in and want to give him some refreshment and happiness. You, you will be delighted because of the delight you offer him, especially in the divine will. This uh, passage that starts on 288, I dog-eared that page, and um, uh, I underlined, only Jesus knows the martyrdom of my poor heart, and that's that's the case certainly for Louisa in her victimhood, and the level of suffering that she went through with the, uh, the, the constant privations at this point in her life and throughout her life, and <clears throat> then uh, Jesus uh, addressing this martyrdom that she had to live, uh, talks about his own, his martyrdom of love and his martyrdom of pain. And then he says the most intense of the three martyrdoms he endured is the martyrdom of being left alone, of being abandoned, of being ignored, of, of uh, 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 humanity thinking that whatever is important to us is more important than he is. Now, there's many times in, in these volumes where Jesus addresses the problem with interests. And when he uses that term, he's not saying that we cannot be interested in different things, uh, gaining uh, an awareness of the goods that God has created. It, but it's to generate, it's to help us turn towards the Lord. It's not to become the the most important thing to us. So that when he uses the term interests, is is that we become so interested in things that don't last instead of uh, <clears throat> uh, using those. Uh, interesting points of life or activities uh, as a springboard for our increased gratitude and appreciation. So he feels totally abandoned when we place all of our attention on things that don't matter or don't last forever. 
other pains he uh, seemed a refreshment compared to the suffering of being abandoned by us being left alone if only i had company in love i would feel happy because with company all things acquire happiness we were created by love or out of love we're sustained by love so that we can love him for all eternity and receive all of his love so he created us so that he could pour love into us and teach us how to uh, have that beautiful relationship of loving him certainly with human love is good but in these lessons how to love him with divine love with a love that never ends with a love that's always alive and and then he goes on uh well i bracketed that whole last paragraph and when he says what is the use what is the use what is the use he's making clear to us that nothing here on earth can can uh, meet the levels of goodness that is possible for uh, that are possible for us who are striving to live in the divine will. There's a there's a place in the Passion where he's uh, I think it's in the scourging where uh, bits of flesh are being ripped from his body, and for him those are the souls that are being separated from him that will not spend eternity with him. And his his uh, his words are, "What is the use of going through all this suffering when even?" in spite of this souls are being lost and so when he uses the term what is the use it's because he gives so much and um, we would be fulfilled in striving to recognize and give thanks and praise to him for all that he offers and all that he makes possible for us okay go ahead september 21st 1920 the acts in the divine will remain confirmed in it I was doing my acts in the most holy will of my Jesus, and moving in my interior, he told me, my daughter, as the soul does her acts in my will, her acts remain confirmed in it. So if she prays in my will, as her prayer remains confirmed in my will, she receives the life of prayer in such a way that she will no longer need to make an effort to pray, but she will feel the spontaneous promptness of prayer within herself. In fact, remaining confirmed in my will, she will feel within herself the spring of the life of prayer. A healthy eye makes no effort to see. Rather, it naturally looks at objects, delighting in them and enjoying them because it contains the life of light within itself. But a sick eye, how many efforts it suffers in looking. In the same way, if the soul suffers in my will, if she works, she will feel within herself a life of patience, a life of working in a saintly way. So as her acts remain confirmed in my will, they lose weakness, miseries, all that is human, and are sub substituted by springs of divine life. And so <clears throat> at the bottom of page 289, where this passage begins, I wrote, uh, uh, along with the title or the focus of this passage, Alive, Continually Acting. So acts in the divine will are alive and will be for all eternity, continually acting. And we'll be delighted to see how that uh, unfolds and blossoms in a way that glorifies God and, and um, uh, makes what seems like insignificant little actions or decisions or words, heartbeats, that um, uh, they have such beauty that we'll be astounded because of the divine will, the very life of God operating in those acts. So he says, my daughter, as the soul does her acts in my will. So this is a, this is a development beyond inviting the divine will to act in us, as important as that is. We need to be continually inviting the divine will into all of our acts, which moves us along to this operating in the will of God. And if she prays in my will, as her prayer remains confirmed in my will, she receives the life of prayer. So every act that is formed in the divine will has this eternal good that continues to unfold. Remaining confirmed in my will is what we need to be striving for. 
And uh, we would do well every morning to ask the Lord to pray the consecration of the divine will, wanting to be confirmed in the divine will, <clears throat> and asking the divine will uh, to help us uh, open ourselves more and more with uh, gaining the knowledges and applying at the level that we understand what we're reading um, to the best of our ability. The Lord sees that and he takes it very seriously. He's, he's uh, delighted to see sons and daughters wanting to be more like um, uh, our Heavenly Father, to pl please him and be filled with divine life so that moving from uh, living as, as beautiful as it is, adopted sons and daughters of God, living as true sons and daughters in the divine will with the very life of the Lord coursing through every part of our being. And that moves us from being merely human, but being <clears throat> sons and daughters. So operating with the divine life. And uh, that's why at the bottom of the last paragraph on page 290, that uh, last paragraph at the top of this uh, passage, I always write when he says uh, weaknesses, miseries, all that is human, I put merely human. So that would be the independent activity, the, the, uh, the focus of um, self-interest and the focus of strictly what uh, the world limits for us. He's offering us, in essence, a living a life of heaven while we're here on earth. And so at the top of this page, 290, I put acts in the divine will are constantly in act, constantly acting, not intermittent. So there's great saints of the past that <clears throat> wanted to do the will of God and were doing it well and doing it as constantly as possible, but they were doing the will of God. They weren't operating within the divine will. They, they didn't know to invite the divine will to be the very life of what they were doing. And so we're privileged to have these lessons so that we are filled with or operating with the spring of divine life. And that's the point that he makes those acts are continually flowing. They don't run out. Just like uh, <clears throat> uh, the smallest particle of a consecrated host is no less the real presence of our Lord than the large hosts that they have in some of these uh, uh, conferences. Uh, <clears throat> it's not the size, it's the totality of God's giving himself completely and perfectly to us. And so he wants this in every one of our acts. And we do well every morning to ask the Lord to make this a reality, to take the lessons that we've received and to help us understand in such a way that we're, we're striving throughout the course of the day to only and always live the will of God. Go ahead. September 25th, 1920. The truth is light, simile of the sun. Finding myself in my usual state, I saw my always lovable Jesus as if he were placing a globe of light in my interior. Then he told me, my daughter, my truth is light. And in communicating it to souls who are limited beings, I communicate my truths to the limited light since they are not capable of receiving immense light. However, it happens as with the sun, while it appears up there in the heavens as a limited circled globe of light, the light which it spreads invades the whole earth. It warms, it fecundates. So it is impossible for man to count the plants fecundated and the lands illuminated and warmed by the sun. While he can see it up high in the heavens in a twinkling of an eye, he cannot see where its light ends up, nor the good which it does. The same happens with the sons of the truths which I communicate to the souls. They appear as limited within them, but as soon as these truths come out, how many souls do they not touch? How many minds do they not enlighten? How much good do they not do? This is why you saw me place a globe of light inside of you. These are my truths which I communicate to you. Be attentive in receiving them, and more attentive in communicating them in order to give force to the light of my truths. Now, returning to pray, I found myself in the arms of my celestial mama, who caressed me, squeezing me to her lap. But then, I don't know how, I forgot about her, and I was lamenting that all had abandoned me. And Jesus, flying by, told me, 
Just a little while ago, my mama was here, who squeezed you in her arms with great love. And as he said that, I remembered. The same happens with me. How many times I come and you forget about it. Could I perhaps be without coming? On the contrary, I act like a mama. When her child sleeps, she kisses and caresses her, though the child does not know anything about it. And when she wakes up, she laments that her mama does not kiss her and does not love her. That's what you do. Praise be Jesus, author of Loving Strategies. There's never a moment when the Lord is not kissing and caressing us. And the more that we strive to be attentive to his presence, the more we benefit. But that doesn't stop him even when we're not attentive or aware of his love. He never stops loving us. His love is what sustains us. His love created us. And his love is what sustains us moment by moment. Uh, on uh, page 290, I bracketed that uh, top part, truth is light. And then she says he, it was, uh, he placed a globe of light in her interior. <clears throat> the more truth we take in, the more we are filled with divine life, with the, the light of the Lord. Uh, the reason the world is in such darkness today, certainly our nation is, is that people are choosing darkness. They're turning away from the truth, so they don't have the light of truth. And <clears throat> the sad thing is, when that is a, a deliberate choice, then there's a blindness that keeps increasing, even to the point of the pursuit of darkness, and demanding that darkness be treated as if it's light, calling evils good, calling sin good. Whenever sin is presented as a good in any form, uh, any form of sin, whenever it's being presented as a good and a right that should be promoted, everybody has free will. So there are rights to do the right thing or the wrong thing. But whenever it's being pre presented or promoted as a good, you know that the diabolical is involved. It's satanic whenever an evil is presented as a good and promoted as a good. And so we need to be praying, especially uh, <clears throat> in these times. Um, uh, there's uh, a uh, sorrow, not anger. Anger doesn't fix it. Anger can actually propel it. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, if there's a sorrow and if there's a genuine concern for souls, then uh, we would find opportunities to share some truth at the level that the person is able to listen, wants to know. And uh, those seeds of truth, their seeds of light, can help people eventually get free. Uh, but do we have to be careful because uh, when the opportunity is given to us, sometimes we want to we want to give the whole uh, sun to them. And uh, if we uh, if we push too hard or, or don't uh, stay aware of uh, at one point, the openness is starting to uh, withdraw a bit, then we can we can actually cause obstacles. But the light itself, the truth itself, is light and will open the mind and hearts. I, I'm, I'm so happy to have been able to see this happen with people. Um, and sometimes people who were really steeped in darkness, but had questions and were uh, willing to listen a little bit to the truth and little by little uh, start turning more and more towards God. In this same first paragraph, I bracketed almost, uh, well, at least a, a third of the last part of it. And I wrote in the in the margin, mission of the little secretary and us too. And that's where the same happens with the sons of the truths, which I communicate to the souls. And we're, we're privileged to have these sons of truth being communicated to us every time we study the divine will. They appear as limited within them, but as soon as these truths come out, how many souls do they not touch? And so when we're when our acts are divinized, and when we have the opportunity to share truth with, with people who want to listen. In fact, uh, a lot of times people can, uh, uh, in either in confession or in spiritual direction, express their frustration that they try to tell somebody what's right, and uh, they get a lot of pushback. And I explain when that happens, it, <clears throat> you need to stop pushing and wait until questions are raised with the genuine 
desire to hear your answer. Otherwise, we can say so much that it can cause people not to even want to hear from us at all. So we can get in the, the way. Uh, and uh, the Lord wants to make us uh, instruments of his light for, for others. This is why you saw me, Jesus says, this is why you saw me place a globe of light inside you. These are my truths, which I communicate to you. And so they're entrusted to us. And we are to be on the lookout for the opportunity to share them, be attentive in receiving them and more attentive in communicating them in order to give course to the light of my truths. So in, um, you know, every Sunday and on solemnities, we pray the Nicene Creed. And uh, uh, we believe, we're apostolic. We're members of the one holy Catholic apostolic church. And apostles are always on the lookout for the opportunity to present the truth, to bring people to the light. And uh, that's this, uh, the Blessed Mother, both in the Virgin and the Kingdom, and also in this passage, we're, we're being advised to be attentive. We need to be faithful. And so I wrote at the bottom of the page, be attentive, grateful, and faithful. Then at the top of page 291, in the margin, I wrote, we are tenderly and constantly loved keep thanking and loving in return. Uh, so uh, if you have the chance to read this passage again, you'll see this, uh, this uh, reference to the fact that um, uh, she had already forgotten that the, the Blessed Mother had paid her a visit. And then she's uh, uh, concerned about seeing the Lord. And he says, I do the same thing. I visit and you, you forget shortly thereafter as well. And whether you're aware of it or not, and so this is how this passage ends, whether you're aware of it or not, I'm constantly loving you. And what's the, what's the right response then to be striving to constantly love him? Okay, we move on. October 12th, 1920. The help of one who lives in the divine will is Jesus alone, and she must be the help of others. I was feeling very oppressed, all alone, without even the hope of receiving a word of help, of reassurance, be it even holy people. It seems that if they come to me, it is for help, for comfort, or for dispelling their own doubts. But for me, nothing. So as I was in this state, my always lovable Jesus told me, my daughter, one who lives in my will, is placed in my same conditions. Assume that I might need the creatures which cannot be, since creatures are not capable of helping their creator. It would be as if the sun wanted to ask for light and heat from other created things. What would they say? They would all draw back and confused would say to it, what, you're asking for light and heat from us, you? who fill the world with your light and fecundate the whole earth with your heat, our light disappears before you. You rather give us light and heat. The same happens to one who lives in my will. Since she is placed in my conditions and since the sun of my volition is in her, she is the one who has to give light, warmth, help, reassurance, comfort, Therefore, I alone am your help, and you, from within my will, will help others. So, uh, as we continue to study uh, and place more and more of our trust in the Lord, recognizing that he is the only one who can satisfy our deepest longings, the only one that can give us what we truly need, uh, it removes the possibility of blaming other people for our unhappiness. In fact, if people are treating us badly, it's uh, a gift from the Lord to be shaped a little bit more like him. So he's the only one that can really uh, satisfy our deepest longings and meet our every need. And the more that we focus on that, the less we can be dissatisfied with people, uh, uh, the way they treat us or the way they treat others. We are to be following the example of the Lord. He says, uh, one who lives in my will. So there's the emphasis again. Uh, first, we continue to invite the divine will into all of our actions. 
but with the goal of living always in the will of God. Then he says, since the son of my volition, the volition, the divine volition, is the will of God in act in everything. Um, uh, she is the one who has to give light, warmth, help, reassurance, and comfort to others with the resources of he himself who gives help, comfort uh, to others. So he's the one that accomplishes the help that we offer to others uh, <clears throat> unless uh, we're resistant. Like uh, maybe she was a little resistant at the top of this passage where she says, they all come to me for help, but I get nothing from them, which is what brings out this lesson that Jesus is saying that they can't give you anything because I am the only one that can give you what you really need in this life and the divine will. In the margin I wrote, only Jesus can satisfy our deepest longings and our needs. The more that we focus on that, the more we can open ourselves to all that he wants to give us and then all that he wants to give others through us. Because when he's animating our actions, <clears throat> when he's the very life of what we're doing and we're striving to do all that he is doing in the divine volition, then we become instruments of his help for others. And we can't be exasperated when he gives us the opportunities to operate that way. Physically, we can be tired. But we, the moment we recognize that there's a little bit of a rub, then we need to renounce the, uh, <clears throat> the self-centeredness that can uh, be a playground for the enemy to justify a resistance to being um, uh, an instrument of his divine life and goods for others. Uh, we can start with the morning offering and then maybe refresh it in the course of the day so that we stay attentive to the fact that we make ourselves completely available to him to do anything and everything he wants to accomplish through our actions. Okay, go ahead. November 15th, 1920. Continuous good makes the creature feel transported to operate good. My state is ever more painful. The most holy will is my only help. As I was with my sweet Jesus, he told me, my daughter, each work done for me, each thought, word, prayer, suffering, and even a simple memory of me are many chains which keep the soul forming in order to bind me and to bind herself to me. These chains, without using violence on the human freedom, have the virtue of sweetly administering to her the chain of perseverance, allowing the formation of the last link and the last step so as to make her take possession of the immortal glory. In fact, continuous good has this virtue, this attraction over the soul, without anyone forcing her or using violence on her. Voluntarily, she feels transported to operate good. So in this short passage, there's a pretty large lesson related to operating voluntarily in our sacrificing ourselves, offering ourselves. He, he makes it clear without using violence on the human freedom. In fact, our human freedom is the only gift we really uh, can offer to the Lord. Uh, he's given us everything. The only thing that he does not take charge of is our human freedom. We must make that sacrifice of our human will and consistently and if we do, then he says, uh, <clears throat> we're going to feel transported in operating good. So if there's this resistance that we feel when there's opportunities to operate in good, uh, <clears throat> the renunciation of that self-centeredness opens us more to this binding that he talks about. That's the choice of being bound to him uh, <clears throat> by sacrificing our little freedom to gain the the absolute freedom that he's offering us in the divine will. Go ahead. November 28, 1920. When Jesus wants to give, he asks, effects of the blessing of Jesus. I was thinking of when my sweet Jesus, in order to begin his sorrowful passion, wanted to go to his mama and ask for her, her blessing. And blessed Jesus told me, my daughter, how many things does this mystery reveal? 
I wanted to go to my dear mama and ask her and ask for her blessing in order to give her the opportunity to ask for my blessing herself. The pains which she was to bear were too many, and it was just that my blessing would strengthen her. It is my usual way to ask whenever I want to give, and my mama understood me immediately, so much so that she did not bless me before asking for my blessing, and only after I blessed her did she bless me. But this is not all. In order to create the universe, I pronounced one fiat, and by that one fiat, I reordered and embellished heaven and earth. In creating man, my omnipotent breath infused life in me. Upon beginning my passion, I wanted to bless my mama with my omnipotent and creative word, but I did not bless her only. In my mama, I saw all creatures. She was the one who had primacy over all, and in her, I blessed all and each one. Even more, I blessed each thought, word, act, etc. I blessed each thing which had to serve the creature. Just as the sun, created by my omnipotent fiat, is still following its course for all, and for each mortal without ever decreasing in light or heat, in the same way, in blessing, my creative word remained in the act of blessing continuously without ever ceasing to bless, just as the sun will never cease to give its light to all creatures. Yet, this is not all. With my blessing, I wanted to renew the qualities of creation. I wanted to call my celestial father to bless in order to communicate power to the creature. I wanted to bless her in my name, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in order to communicate to her wisdom and love, and therefore renew the memory, the intellect and the will of the creature, restoring her as sovereign of all. However, knowing that in giving, I want. My dear mama understood, and she immediately blessed me, not only for herself, but in the name of all. Oh, if she could see this blessing of mine, they would feel it in the water they drink, in the fire that warms them, in the food they take, in the sorrow that afflicts them, in the moans of their prayer, in the remorses of guilt, in the abandonment of creatures, in everything they would hear my creative word saying to them, but alas, it is not heard. I bless you in the name of the Father, of myself, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I bless you to help you. I bless you to defend you, to forgive you, to console you. I bless you to make you a saint. And the creature would echo my blessings by blessing me too in everything. These are the effects of my blessing. And my church, instructed by me, echoes me. And in almost all circumstances, the administration of the sacraments and others, she gives her blessing. So we hear that he wants us to bless him, but that's different than our need for him to bless us. So there are places in the scriptures and in prayers uh, referring to blessing God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, for example. And <clears throat> It's important to understand that th this blessing God, number one, it flows from the blessedness that he brings about in us. <clears throat> uh, he has no need of our blessing. So when we, when we bless God, that expression means that we praise him, we exalt him, we thank him, we adore him, we worship him. So we use all our, our goods to glorify the Lord in our of gratitude and, and in our recognition of who he is for us. That's blessing God. <clears throat> but I want to go back. I, I dog eared page 292 because of this passage starting on, on 292. <clears throat> and um, 
he makes clear that uh, when he asked the Blessed Mother for her blessing, it was to give her the opportunity then to ask for his blessing. He wanted her to, <clears throat> to ask for the blessing so that he could give her the strength that she would need uh, as he was getting ready to go to his passion. He says, it is my usual way to ask whenever I want to give. This is really important. Every time he asks us for anything, <clears throat> it's because he wants to give to us. And whatever he asks for of us, little creatures that we are, even if it feels immense to us, is minuscule in comparison to what he is wanting to give us. So when he asks, it's because he wants to give us in abundance, way beyond anything we can imagine when we respond. <clears throat> uh, and he says that uh, his mother understood. So immediately she asked for a blessing before she gave him a blessing. Uh, she was already uh, fully animated by the divine will at every moment. She, the divine will reigned in her perfectly and completely from the moment of the immaculate conception. And so even with this fullness of grace, which uh, heaven reveals to us in the, in the address of the angel Gabriel, even in this fullness of grace, she wanted his blessing first, and then she was happy to give him her blessing, which is to praise, to thank, to exalt, to acknowledge uh, the goods, uh, to give him that, uh, that loving adoration. In creating man, my omnipotent breath infused life in him, just his breath. But uh, <clears throat> I underlined uh, creating man, my omnipotent breath infused life in him. And that doesn't just mean Adam. It means humanity. When he breathed life into Adam, he breathed life that would take care of all of us. He breathed life into all of us in breathing life into Adam. <clears throat> because everything that he does, is it lives forever. It's a continuous gift. At the top of page 293, I underlined, but I did not bless her only, talking, going back now to the blessing that he gave to the Blessed Mother. I did not bless her only. In my mama, I saw all creatures. She's the mother of us all. Uh, <clears throat> and so when he gave her a blessing, he gave a blessing to each and every one of us she being the mother of us all, the mothers, uh, good mothers, they don't hoard anything. Everything that they have, they give to their children. So this blessing that the Blessed Mother received at that moment, she received for all of us. And it was his intention to give us a blessing, a blessing to all of us. And then he goes on, uh, in her, I blessed all, in case we didn't catch it in that first sentence, he wants to make it clear to us, he blessed all, and each one. And so when he goes through this use of the word each, he wants to make it really clear. It's repetitive so that we don't miss it. Each and every human being from the first to the last, the blessings are available, were available, are available, will be available for all of, of his creatures. For each uh, mortal without ever decreasing in light or heat. So his goods can never run out. They're infinite. They're constantly in act. In the act of blessing continuously. I underlined that just before the end of that first paragraph at the top of page 293. <clears throat> then it goes on in the next paragraph. He, uh, he, he says, uh, I wanted to bless her in my name and in the name of the Holy Spirit in order to communicate to her wisdom and love and uh, renew our memory, our intellect, and our will, the three most noble parts of every human being, our memory, our intellect, and our will. He wants to renew it. He wants to restore it to its original holiness. In fact, he goes on in the last line of that paragraph, <clears throat> and the will of the creature restoring her as sovereign over all. That's what we were created. We were created to be um, <clears throat> the crown of creation, and to have dominion. In fact, it's, it's his words in, in creation, that we were created to have dominion. We lost it when we separate our human will from the divine will. We need to get back to that, the, the mention in the previous passage of uniting our little freedom with the 
with the divine will so that we have the freedom that he intended for us to have from the beginning of creation. Then in the last paragraph, I triple starred this paragraph. I underlined practically everything in it. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, he, he says, in giving, I uh, know that, I, that in giving, I want uh, my dear mama understood, and she immediately blessed me. So when he gives, it's because he wants something. When he asks for something, it's because he wants to give the fire that warms and the food that, that they take. And so I'm not going to read the whole paragraph, but you would do well to read it again, because it makes the point that his divine will, his love, is in every single aspect of our lives. The warmth of the fire, the food that it nourishes us, is the divine will operating for our good. And he wants us to recognize this so that uh, <clears throat> we want to give ourselves more and more to him because he'll never stop giving, giving to those who are responding to him with generous hearts. Here we go on. December 18th. 1920, return of love and thanksgiving for all that God operated in the celestial mom. I was all afflicted without my Jesus when I was praying. I felt him near me saying, ah, my daughter, things are getting worse. It will come like a whirlwind to shake everything. It will rain as long as a whirlwind does, and it will end just as a whirlwind does. The Italian government lacks the ground under its feet, and it does not know what to aim at. Justice of God. After this, I felt I was outside of myself, and I found myself together with my sweet Jesus, but clinging so tightly to him, and he told me that I almost could not see his divine person. I don't know how. I said, my Jesus, while I am clinging to you, I want to prove to you my love my gratitude in everything which the creature has the duty to do, because you have created our immaculate queen mom, the most beautiful one, the holiness, the holiest, important of grace, enriching her with all gifts and making her also our mother. And I do this in the name of creatures, past, present, and future. I want to seize each act of creature, each word, thought, heartbeat, and step, and tell you in each one of them that I love you, I thank you, I bless you, I adore you, for all that you have done in your celestial mama and mine. Jesus enjoyed my act, but so much that he said to me, my daughter, I was anxiously awaiting this act of yours in the name of all generations. My justice and my love felt the need of this return, because great are the graces which descend upon all for having enriched my mama so much, yet they never have a word uh, I thank you to say to me. Another day I was saying to my lovable Jesus, everything is over for me, suffering, visits of Jesus, everything, and he immediately have you perhaps stopped loving me or doing my will? And I, no, may this never be. And he, if this is not, nothing is over. So as long as we strive to keep loving him, offering him our acts, uh, <clears throat> and living his will, learning about his divine will, and applying it at the level that we can understand the lessons, uh, nothing will be over for us. The increase will be constant, even if we don't sense it, even if we don't see manifestations of it, because he's in his benevolence. Sometimes he doesn't let us see what's happening because we could get uh, maybe overly focused on the, the benefit instead of the giving of ourselves so that we are being formed more and more uh, according to his likeness. Uh, I, uh, I bracketed from the second uh, paragraph all the way down because this is a beautiful way for us to pray. You know, there are so many places where Louisa uh, <clears throat> offers a prayer or she talks, she explains how she was uh, offering herself or uh, praying on behalf of all souls, past, present, and future. And uh, those prayers 
while we certainly do well to gain the knowledge and formulate our own spontaneous prayers as well, you can't go wrong when you use the, the prayers of a saintly one that has already been affirmed repeatedly in the prayers that she prays. And so, uh, especially uh, if you can dog ear the page or put a little marker on this, on this particular passage, when we get to celebrating the Immaculate Heart, this is a wonderful way to to uh, glorify and praise Jesus for giving us his mother and all the goods that he gave her for our sake. We just heard in the previous passage that when he blessed her, he blessed all of us. In her, he blessed all of us. And so uh, this particular passage, um, I, I halfway down the, the um, that paragraph, I put an, uh, an asterisk and the words, our work, because he goes on to say how pleased he is that she's praying this way. So this is the point uh, in that hmm, I want to prove to you my love, my gratitude, and everything which the creature has the duty to do. So here she is now saying, I want to, I want to prove to you my love and my gratitude, and I want to give you all the gratitude, all the love that every creature uh, has the duty to give. So she wants to make up for the deficiency on the part of all of humanity that does not turn to him and does not express gratitude and, and uh, love for the Blessed Mother, uh, <clears throat> because you have created our Immaculate Queen Mama. So she wants to give this gratitude on behalf of all of humanity. And think about the so many uh, believers, um, in, in fact, even some Catholics, but uh, non-Catholic Christians they have nothing to say good, no, no appreciation, no recognition of the important role of the Blessed Mother in our lives. They're not privileged to know, and so we need to pray for them that they come to a, an intensified awareness and relationship with the Blessed Mother, because that glorifies Jesus. Jesus loves his Blessed Mother in a way that we cannot, with an infinite love. And if we strive to love her more and more, it pleases him very much. It, uh, and so... Uh, it goes on, and I do this in the name of creatures, past, present, and future. I want to seize each act of creatures, each word, thought, heartbeat. So she's collecting uh, in the spirit, in the divine will, all of these acts of all of humanity and putting an I love you, I praise you, I thank you, and, and uh, gratitude for our Blessed Mother. So you might think about using this paragraph well, any day really, but especially on uh, when we celebrate the Immaculate Heart, which is always the day after we celebrate the Sacred Heart. And uh, that's why uh, the good articles say that June is the month of the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart. It's also the month of the Most Holy Trinity. It's also the month of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord. It's no wonder that uh, the world is reeling against these very holy uh, days, uh, both in May and in June. When sin abounds, grace does all the more abound. And so uh, it, we do well in the divine will to, uh, to uh, celebrate these holy days on behalf of all souls, past, present, and future. Okay, go ahead. December 22nd, 1920. The creative power is found in the divine will, deaths which give life to others. I was thinking about the most holy will of God, saying to myself, what a magic force this, this divine will has, what power, what enchantment. Now, while I was thinking of this, my lovable Jesus told me, my daughter, the mere word, will of God, contains the creative power. Therefore, it has the power to create, to transform, to consume, and to make new torrents of light, of love, of sanctity flow in the soul. Only in the fiat is there creative power. And if the priest consecrates me in the host, it is because my will gave that power to those words which he pronounced over the holy host. Therefore, everything comes from the fiat and is found in it. And if the mere thought of doing my will, the soul feels soothed, strengthened, changed, because by thinking of doing my will, 
It is as if she placed herself on the way to find all goods. What will it will be to do it? After this, I recall that years before, my sweet Jesus had said to me, we will present ourselves before the Supreme Majesty with written, with written on our foreheads in indelible characters. We want death in order to give life to our brothers. We want pains in order to free them from eternal pains. Now I said to myself, how can I do this if he does not come? I could do it with him, but I am unable to go by myself. And then how can I suffer so many deaths? And blessed Jesus moving in my interior told me, my daughter, you can do it always and in every instant because I am always with you and I never leave you. And then I want to tell you how these deaths are and how they are formed. I suffer death when my will wants to operate some good in the, in the creature and departing from me, it brings with itself the grace and the help which are needed in order to do that good. If the creature is disposed to do that good, it is as if my will multiplied another life. If the creature is reluctant, it is as if my will suffered a death. Oh, how many deaths does my will suffer? Death in the creature is when I want her to do some good, and by not doing it, her will dies to that good. Therefore, if the creature is not in continuous act of doing my will, she receives as many deaths for as many times as she does not do it. She dies to that life, which she should have by doing that good. She dies to that grace. She dies to those charisms. Now I will tell you what your deaths are, with which you could give life to our brothers. When you feel deprived of me and your heart is lacerated, and when you feel an iron hand that squeezes it, you feel a death, or rather more than death, because death would be life for you. This death could give life to our brothers, because this pain is the death contain a divine life, an immense life, a creative power. They contain everything. They are a death and a pain which contain an eternal and infinite value. So how many lives could you give to our brothers? I will suffer these deaths together with you, giving them the value of my death, so as to release life from death. Therefore, look at how many deaths you suffer each time you want me, and you do not find me is a real death for you, because you really do not see me, do not feel me. This is death for you. It is martyrdom. And that which is death for you can be life for others. It is martyrdom. So <clears throat> we might refer to this as the white martyrdom. I mentioned St. Marcellinus and St. Peter, uh, martyrs <clears throat> that uh, <clears throat> suffered the bloody death. And uh, there are other saints of the church that went through a long, hard suffering and total self-giving that we could refer to, the church refers to a white martyrdom, not a bloody martyrdom, although Louisa had plenty of uh, bloody martyrdoms and was sustained with, um, with her multiple, multiple stigmatizations, but not unto, unto her death at the hands of others. So then we have this uh, example that uh, <clears throat> If we offer our sufferings in the divine will, Jesus takes those, those offerings, those deaths, and uh, uses them for the salvation of souls. It, it alleviates his, some of his suffering, but it also gains, wins souls. And this is why throughout the history of the church, even without these lessons, it was understood that when, um, when uh, saints were suffering and offering their sufferings to the Lord in union with his suffering, they would say they were saving souls and they didn't see themselves as saviors. They saw themselves as, in a sense, co-redeemers, small c, and giving themselves 
<clears throat> and the utility of their suffering to the Lord to, to give it great value. And so uh, there's also this reference in this passage of the terrible suffering that we can't understand of these privations. And Jesus is making it clear that these are deaths for her. It's because of the height of the experience that she enjoyed, <clears throat> was nourished by <clears throat> every time that she heard him or saw him or uh, he was treating her lovingly. Uh, it set her up and strengthened her for these horrific sufferings of the privations that she had to endure. At the top of the page, 296, I bracketed the <clears throat> last part of that uh, paragraph at the top of the page. Therefore, if the creature is not in continuous act of doing my will, she receives as many deaths for as many times as she does not do the will of God. <clears throat> she dies to the light which she should have been doing that, which she should have by doing that good. She dies to that grace. She dies to those charisms. So whenever we are not living the will of God, whenever we're not embracing what uh, he is bringing about in our lives, pleasant or unpleasant, and, <clears throat> uh, and striving to make a perfect offering of it, uh, being detached from our, all our preferences, so uh, trying to live with no self-interest, uh, <clears throat> no preferences contrary to what he uh, wills for us. Whenever that's not the case, there's a death to what is possible because every moment of our lives, every act, pleasant or unpleasant, that he's causing to occur, bringing about, you know, uh, I think of uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta, she said, the will of God is to recognize it unfolding all around us and within us and embracing it. Whenever we don't do that, there's a death to the possibility of the goods that the Lord already has prepared for us. So with that, we'll, we'll uh, close the, the meeting wanting to strive only and always to live the will of God so that there's not a loss to the charisms, the goods that the Lord uh uh, wills to give us if we are striving to uh, unite our will with the divine will, fuse our will with the divine will. <clears throat> so we'll close with prayer. Thank you, Mark, for being our reader tonight. And we, uh, we need to all choose to be in constant prayer always, but especially during this time when there's so much confusion about uh, right and wrong uh, and uh, Certainly the media is promoting every kind of unbelievable behavior <clears throat> and attack on people of, of faith. Uh, it's sad to see that uh, the present administration uh, seems to have no interest in prosecuting those that uh, desecrate churches or come against uh, pro-life folks. Uh, that, uh, and so <clears throat> it's a time for us to intensify our prayer and to um, be inviting the divine will into all that we say and do. And so we pray, O oh Lord, <clears throat> you are all powerful. You are God. You are our Father. We beg you through the intercession and help of the archangels Michael, uh, Raphael, and Gabriel for the deliverance of our brothers and sisters who are enslaved by the evil one. All saints of heaven come to our aid. From anxiety, sadness, and obsessions, we beg you, free us, O Lord. From hatred, envy, fornication, we beg you, free us, O Lord. From thoughts of jealousy, rage, and death, we beg you, free us, O Lord. From every thought of suicide and abortion, we beg you, free us, O Lord. From every form of sinful sexuality, we beg you, free us, O Lord. From every division in our family and every harmful friendship, we beg you, free us, O Lord. From every sort of spell, malefice, witchcraft, and every form of the occult, we beg you, free us, O Lord. You said, Lord Jesus, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Grant that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, we may be liberated from every evil spell and enjoy your peace always. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, come divine will, reign on earth, come to reign in us. Amen. And we have time to pray for the glorification, the beatification of the servant of God, 
Luisa Pecorera. Almost Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you for the gift of holiness you granted to your faithful servant, Luisa Picaretta. She lived, dear Father, in your divine will and became under the influence of the Holy Spirit, similar to your son who died on the cross due to his obedience. She was a victim and a host welcome to you, thus contributing to the redemption of mankind. Her virtues of obedience, humility, love of Christ and to the church urge us to ask you, for the gift of her glorification on her, so that your glory may shine in your kingdom of truth, justice, and love may spread all over the world in the particular charism of the fiat voluntas tua sicut in cielo et in terra. We appeal to you by her merits to obtain from you, O Most Holy Trinity, the particular grace of her beatification, which we ask of you with and in your divine will. Amen. O most sacred heart of my Jesus, who chose your humble servant Louisa as the herald of the kingdom of your divine will and the angel of reparation for the countless sins that grieve your divine heart, we humbly pray you to grant us this grace through her intercession that we implore of your mercy so that she may be glorified on earth as you have rewarded her in heaven. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. May the Lord bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you can join us again next week. God bless you all.